and for this I'm going to go over into RhinoCam and we'll take a look at how we can identify slots, open slots and machine them. Now the open slots can be identified if you have a solid surface geometry you can use the feature detection in here to identify these open slots as you can see right there by using the feature detection to identify them or if you'd like to use the um, uh, the conventional way we used to do it we can select either curves or surface edges to machine open slots so under two axis you will notice that there is a new machining operation that's been introduced and this is available starting with the standard configuration of our mill module so if you have standard expert pro or premium for version 2017 you'll have the slot machining operation now this can be used for programming both open and closed slots in this particular case I'm going to use slotting and select these uh, open slots I can use select curve edge regions and I can either select a surface edge or I can pick curves as my drive geometry or the part region and then for the tool I'm going to pick a quarter inch end mill so I know that the width of the slot is a quarter inch so I'm going to pick a quarter inch now had I selected a larger tool it's going to uh, in a warn me saying that the tool is too big it's going to it can program the slot and then we can establish the slot parameters you can specify the slot cut direction and you can specify your cut levels in here you can pick the depth of the 3D model and you can specify multiple depths per cut if needed and then pick generate and there's your slot machining operation now had I chosen a smaller tool in here so I could go into my machining objects browser and I'm going to drop an eighth inch end mill on it in here so I can take the eighth inch end mill and drop it on top of the machining operation you'll notice that the operation has been flagged dirty right click and regenerate on it you'll notice that it automatically creates a tricardal tool pad since the the diameter of the cutter is smaller than the width of the slot so when the diameter of the cutter is equal to the width of the slot you'd have a single pass when it is smaller you will notice that it creates a tricardal tool pad so this is uh, one of the new machining methods that has been introduced under two axis it's called two axis slot machining or also known as slotting you can find it under the two axis menu uh, okay. one one more inter interjection here um, you know what one of the things that you notice this is this is the old way of machining uh, machining in our product where you're going actually going through and selecting curves and edges and surfaces uh, for control geometry and then also if you notice would they also selected the the cut depth uh, to assign for the machining Now, one of the nice things about the feature based is all of that is automatically detected in the feature and we can take advantage of that information that's already in the feature so would they if you can show that feature based slot machining that'll be great at this point thank you thank you Joe so I have the slots identified using feature detection when I right click on it and I choose slotting the slot features have been added in here and when you make a tool selection and you go into your cut levels you'll notice that the the slot depth has automatically been determined with the feature detection so when you hit generate it automatically establishes the depth of the slot. Now if you'd like to specify depth control, you could always go in here and set your rough depth per cut and generate it so that will create multiple levels. So you could either use your conventional way of selecting face edges or curves to program slots or other features or you can use to take advantage of the feature detection to identify those features and automatically generate toolpaths by not having to go and enter in the depth and other parameters to it.